What's up guys, Philip Collin, Pack Pythons, back in the snake pit. And today, we're gonna to talk about secondhand reptile equipment and how to properly clean and sanitize new things that you're bringing into your snake pit at your home to make sure that your animals stay safe and that you're not re or introducing new uh, bacteria, parasites, viruses, whatever. So. I'm gonna switch the camera around and we're gonna go into my workshop and I'll show you some steps I take whenever I buy or take in new equipment. And before we get into that, have to shout out Atypical Origins. These guys are awesome. Met them on Instagram. They're an autism family just like ours and uh, definitely appreciate them. They do a lot of uh, live streams on Instagram. Make sure you guys go show them some love follow whatever um, and that's it let's jump right in all right guys so this is my workshop it's uh, actually a lot bigger than what you could see but this is part of it um, good place to set up this 10 gallon aquarium uh, I will probably never use this aquarium for anything to live in but I personally like to kind of hoard equipment and I could use this as a holding tank when I'm cleaning something or who knows maybe my kids will catch something in the yard and they want to throw it in there whatever it's just nice to have uh, the first step to receiving someone else's equipment into your space for sure immediately get rid of any loose debris out of it try not to even bring that into your your workspace your snake pit or whatever you want to call it the next step, and I think this is probably often overlooked, is to make sure that you remove any sort of stuck on residue from the inside and the outside of the enclosure. So Velcro, thermostats, throw those away. If uh, any sort of, uh, anything with a sticky residue needs to go because uh, while that probably can't harbor viruses or bacteria on its own, earth or bedding or any sort of physical nat uh, natural matter could s material could stick to that and that could harbor bacteria that you don't want transmitting to your animals so uh, I like to keep a bunch of these cheap razor blades and just kind of pass it over something like this this is a, a, a pad from a, an old heat mat and I'm just gonna take my time and get that really, really clean and make sure that I don't leave behind any residue because you never know what could be stuck in that sticky material. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Because a good deal will turn into a bad deal if you end up getting your animals sick. I've seen a lot of people that get new equipment in. The reason I, I'm putting this video together is that I've personally watched people get new equipment, racks, tanks, tubs, whatever, and they'll take spray bottle with F10 in it or whatever their cleaning with, you know, stuff is that they like to use. They spray it down and immediately wipe it, slap it with a paper towel, and then they throw it. And then if, especially if they're getting a bunch of stuff as a good deal, they'll, you know spray something slap it throw it over spray something they try to hurry through and honestly that's the time that you really want to slow down take your time because you're messing with a bunch of sorry about that hit my table um you're messing with a lot of opportunities for bacteria and stuff to carry over now, typically a lot of uh residual bacteria and stuff will die if you don't put a new animal in back into it immediately but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So now that we've gotten rid of the sticky material, the next step is to take this and we're gonna go out in the driveway and we're gonna soak it down and spray it out and get it nice and clean. And let's, actually real quick, before we jump to that, this is a project I worked on a while back. Uh, it's a taxidermied rat tattoo parlor and I never managed to send it off to my friend and because of COVID I haven't made it there yet. But I think we're either going to make a trip there soon or 
we're going to, uh, maybe I'll mail it to her, but I finally added like a little uh, tattoo cord from the pedal and all that stuff. <laughs> kind of silly. If you're interested in watching me make this, uh, there's a video up there. And no, I will not make any more. Uh, I'm never doing that again. I like to do things once and then move along. Okay. Anyways, let's go get these things cleaned up. All right, guys. Now, on this Kunas edition of how to clean cages, uh, let's see, step one, make sure you're barefoot because that's important. Um, I don't like wearing shoes. I'm not a big fan of them. I'm from South Louisiana, so that's kind of my thing. Our, it's our thing, I guess. <laughs> Palm Olive Antibacterial Soap. I buy this at Walmart. It's super cheap. You do not have to use this specific one. Any sort of dish soap that's antibacterial will do the job. Um, now, I would never recommend exposing your animals directly to this. So before these enclosures or tubs will ever get used again uh, for animals, they will be thoroughly, thoroughly rinsed and there's actually a whole nother step. So if you left off right here, you could potentially cause damage or harm to your animals. Make sure uh, that this gets thoroughly, thoroughly rinsed. So all I do is I spread my stuff out all over the driveway and I go with this and I put a little dribble of it in each enclosure, tub, bucket, whatever and then come back and use my hose to spray with the jet mode, you know, like real intense. And that's gonna break up any kind of stuck on debris and it's gonna make those bubbles kind of froth up and make a big mess. Once you do that, you can let it sit and kind of soak the bottom of all these tubs. Typically that's where the majority of your issues are. Um, and then come back after about 10 minutes and put it in I uh, put it in full mode where it's just uh, a lot more water coming out and I'm gonna use that to splash it up to the sides and get the soap kind of spread all over the inside of the enclosures and then we're gonna come through with a rag and wipe physically wipe the inside of all the tubs and there's a reason for the wiping uh, even if these tubs look perfectly clean uh, the research that they found specifically about nidovirus, and this is gonna to apply to any sort of bacteria and uh, any sort of parasites or whatever, is that uh, there's a massive difference in the amount or the speed that soap can kill, or especially antibacterial stuff. The, the amount of time it takes for that to work is exponentially increased when you physically manipulate that surface. So taking a rag and rubbing into that soap or rubbing into that you know, sediment or whatever is going to almost immediately kill anything that's on that surface. Then once we're done and everything's wiped, we're gonna thoroughly rinse this. And then it at that point can just get put up on a shelf uh, and stored or whatever until you need it. And then before I use even a, a dry, like I got, for instance, here's a stack of clean six ounce or six quart tubs. And before I would use any of these, I'm gonna take F10, it's pre-mixed, watered down. I'm gonna spray the inside down. I'm gonna let it soak for a few minutes. I'm gonna wipe it out with a paper towel. Again, physically manipulating anything that's in here. And that is gonna be the final step to the process to be sure that everything is dead and gone. That applies to how I clean my tubs and also how I clean new equipment that I've brought into my collection. So I guess we're going to leave it off there. Uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with watching me clean. Hey guys, uh, my kids are washing their, their monster trucks in my tanks right now, which is, you know, whatever. Kids being kids, so let them tear it up. It's currently uh, like 50, 55 degrees outside. <laughs> a little chilly. It's kind of why I was pointing out that I'm barefoot, just because, you know, I don't know. That's how I feel comfortable. I know that's weird. But you guys take it easy. If it ain't easy, don't take it. Peace.